ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. Well, tonight, it's a different night because, well, we start with some issues. I would like to say thank you very much to Facebook to change the new interface that it has created a lot of issues. So thank you very much, F uh, Facebook. Uh, we cannot do this, this, uh, this show live. Apologies for that one. The interface between Zoom and Facebook is not working. So, well, of course, we will receive any feedback from your side if you know how to sort it out the 404 issue that is happening every time that you're trying to put go live. So thank you very much. Apologies, but well, uh, thank you very much to Mark and to all the team on Facebook for this. Hopefully they are working to support and well to, fi to fix it, the issue soon. However, well, we're, of course, we, we plan a show for you and we are doing this show for you and we're going to talk about Guatemala. So before, I would like to ask you to follow us in our different uh, social networks that we have. You can follow us on Instagram, you can follow us on uh, YouTube, Twitter, and also Facebook. What do you have there, Royer? I don't know, but you're telling me something. So well, uh, so well, thank you very much to anyone. So please follow us, give us a, a like on Facebook. If you are uh, subscribed to YouTube, because while well, all the different shows that we have, we pass them on YouTube later, so you put the bell there in order that you know when we are like just putting a new one, a new, we are uploading a new video. Uh, so well, it's like, as I said at the beginning, we're going to talk about Guatemala. We have two amazing guests today. We're going to talk not only about food, well, you know, Guatemala is an extended country and they have a lot of different things. So well, we're going to talk about food and we're to talk, going to talk about art. So as I said, and also when I had this conversation with one of our guests, it's very difficult to explain why is she doing because she's a multifaceted artist. So it's quite difficult, but well, she's a, uh, she plays the violin, she uh, is a musician, she's a singer, she's an artist. So this is money. Well, she's Monica. And on the other side, we're going to have Amalia, that Amalia is going to tell us a little bit more about food and how the gastronomy of Guatemala. But well, before we start the show, I would like to introduce my friends, mis amigos, Roger Alarcón. Hello everyone. Well, we're here. It doesn't matter the problems. And remember, look this on the internet. Maybe they can help you. <laughs> but anyway, welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, my dear Roger. So if you know how to sort it out, this 404 issue and the interface between Zoom and Facebook, please take you guys, give us a call. We need you. So while well, on the other side, we have Wendy Nocereno. Hi everyone. You know what they say, the show must go on. So <laughs> we're going to give you this recorded version and I'm really excited because we get to talk about different facets of Guatemala that we didn't get to talk about in full last time. Um, so just stay tuned and like us a lot on Facebook since you can't comment with us right now. <laughs> Excellent. Please don't leave us a commentary regarding to the tech <laughs> issue today. So while it's like, uh, we are very happy as well. We are trying to take it as as, as, as easy as we can have it. So, well, I would like to introduce first to our, well, our first guest that we have. Uh, as I said before, we're going to talk about the food. We're going to talk about this kind of diversity that we have uh, from different countries in Latin America. And uh, we have Amalia Moreno, that, well, she's like an outstanding chef. Uh, she's from Guatemala. Now she's located, she's based in the U.S., but, well, Good afternoon, Amalia. How are you doing? Hi, Enrique. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure for us. And well, uh, Amalia, I would like to say, well, if you can tell us just a little bit about your background. Uh, of course, you are from Guatemala. Where from Guatemala you are from? And also, well, what makes you to move to the U.S.? Yes, I'll be happy to do that. Um, I am born and raised in Guatemala City. And I learned the ropes of the kitchen with my maternal grandmother. Uh, that's where I get the uh, culinary background from. I moved to the U.S. Uh, to pursue uh, other opportunities. And I had a prior corporate career before becoming a full-time uh, chef entrepreneur. And I've been doing this for the last 15 years. And I love it. Well, of course. Well, and I think so we could love all the traditional foods and everything because, well, they are just fantastic. And, well, Amalia, uh, you were saying that, well, of course, your, your grandma is like the, the one that will uh, engage you to this journey of food and how to cook, etc. So, well, it's like, 
how all these traditions and how your family and not only your grandmother, maybe Guatemala, because well, you are very focused in the Guatemalan food and cuisine. So it's like, how you decided instead of trying like French food or it could be Japanese food, etc. Why did you decide to go to the roots and go back to the Guatemalan food? Great question. When I just uh, graduated from uh, Le Cordon Bleu here in the uh, Twin Cities, um, that is what I started doing. I started doing different kinds of cuisine and not just necessarily Guatemalan. Uh, although Guatemalan cuisine has always been the, the core um, of my cuisine, I had a very good uh, teacher at Le Cordon Bleu who told me, Amalia, you're a Latina and you're Guatemalan, embrace your roots. And that's the best advice anybody has given me. And ever since I have been uh, embracing the culture and the food and have taken it to uh, the next level by creating a book. Uh, because when I left Guatemala, I missed my country and I missed uh, the connection to, um, to the country tremendously. And I found that um, a great way to reconnect to my roots was through the cuisine. And as I mentioned, my grandmother has uh, been very instrumental in my life and uh, the food stayed with me um, ever since. So I, I saw an opportunity to um, create um, a book on Guatemalan cuisine and culture here in the US because there wasn't a book um, like that. And, and for me, it was an opportunity also to um, help those like me uh, to reconnect with Guatemala. And um, for example, you were saying that, uh, it's interesting because well, you were saying that before you were in the corporate world, yeah? Mm -hmm. How do you take the decision like saying, yes, I'm going to leave all these things and I'm going to move to the, to become a chef, to study. Of course, well, you said that, well, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the, uh, uh, from the beginning you used to cook and you really like it because of course your grandma put this kind of um, ideas and also what you saw her. But it's like, how do you take this decision to say, and give up of the corporate world, let's go to do it these things that they are more interesting and just cooking and make sh and become a chef? Yeah, so I followed uh, sort of from my uh, sister's footsteps. Uh, she was a banker in uh, Guatemala City and uh, she's my older sister. So I looked up to her and when I came to the US, um, I applied for a job in an international bank and I, I got the, the, the job and I made a career uh, of it because I was in banking for almost 20 years, but I always cooked up a storm and entertained all the time because uh, you know, cooking is not just a, uh, something that I turned on and, and started doing. I've been doing it for, for a long time since I left Guatemala. And when I left uh, banking uh, behind, uh, be it was because my, my son was born and I wanted to dedicate uh, more time to be with him. And that gave me the opportunity to totally switch careers. So once I was at home with him, I, I missed banking uh, tremendously. But then, you know, this was an opportunity for me to do what I really love to do, which is uh, uh, food and culture. And well, I know that while well, you have a greeting and while well, you, you, you have one book, and I think so that you are, I think so you have the book there because you, you show us the book before. So I think so you have your book there. Yeah. That's right here. Right. Yes. <laughs> so you have one book, but also I know that you are like uh, about to, you're working in the next one. Yeah. Yes. So, I just finished this, the second one. And um, the second one is, um, is also Guatemala-centric, um, like the first one. Uh, but uh, this one expands uh, into the southern part of uh, Mexico and the Central America region. So this is by, um, by design, um, and it is meant to be an educational tool. Um, beyond uh, the cuisine and the culture, it goes deeper into the um, the historical um, part of the region. Okay, and in that way, it's like yeah, because I I can, I can see that well. It's a it's a big book, you know, the one that you have there. <laughs> yes, it's a big one. So it's like, how can you tell us like well, typical dishes or something that is like? I, and I would like to start this question not about the typical dishes. It's like. What is the core or like the main ingredients that Guatemalan cuisine they have? 
Great question. So the backbone of uh, Guatemalan cuisine is, is Mayan and, and the ingredients um, are not too different from uh, Mexican ingredients. What uh, we have in common is we share corn, beans and squash and tomatoes and chili peppers. Um, and we uh, make it our own uh, with the Mayan influence. So Guatemalan cuisine is uh, very colorful and full of uh, vegetables. And, and because it's Mayan in nature, uh, it has uh, many uh, stews. Uh, there are uh, five uh, Mayan stews that uh, were uh, recognized by the Guatemalan uh, government as intangible uh, cultural patrimony of the country. And these, are, these dishes are a representative um, of, of the cuisine. Um, and they are um, called Hokong is one of them, um, Pepian is another one, Mole uh, is another one, another one is called um, Kakik as well, and uh, another one is called Pinol. Uh, so these names may uh, resonate uh, with you being uh, from Mexico. Uh, so we have uh, commonalities and some of the names of the dishes uh, may sound the same, but uh, in terms of uh, seasonings um, and, and finishing touches, uh, Guatemalan cuisine is milder and, and not as spicy as, as Mexican cuisine per se. Um, and um, it incorporates uh, a lot of uh, the native uh, fruit, uh, fruits and vegetables from, from the country, which at times um, you know, are, are different from, from not only uh, Mexico, but the rest of, of Central America. So the cuisine is, is, is delicious and, and, and some of the traits are some of the pairings that uh, are served with uh, this uh, Mayan stews, uh, which can range from uh, a basic uh, vegetable rice uh, to uh, tamales of, of different kinds. And uh, some of these dishes, I should say, are also uh, ceremonial in nature, uh, meaning that they, are very, um, they have a very strong meaning behind the Mayan culture. And in that way, that well, it's like a, you're talking on all these foods and everything. And I, we, we have the opportunity to, to start watching a video that Roger, he was sharing with us. It's like, I know that you have a YouTube channel. Uh, yes. Also, uh, you have a website that is very interesting because you have a lot of things. So you are sharing your recipes with the audience and they can practice and they can do it. So it's like, yes. first of all, how is coming this idea to share? Because, well, if you have a book, why are you sharing the recipes in the same way that they like, saying, okay, well, I'm going to save some money and I'm going to check on the YouTube, but it's like, how is like, how is coming all these ideas, you know, that as well to, to reproduce these kind of flavors and how has been the outcome that you have get, uh, you have gotten with all these kind of uh, traditional cuisine? Yes, uh, the dish that you were showing just now, that is a Mayan dish called Hokong, uh, and it's a, a green stew, by the way. Um, so the, the way it works, uh, in the case sometimes um, um, I uh, support the um, the nonprofit um, organizations uh, here in the Twin Cities and in other parts of uh, of, of uh, the U.S. And uh, the times when I share my uh, videos and recipes uh, online are specifically with these groups. So. I also share uh, uh, recipes that um, are, are, you know, are going to be um, an opportunity for me to pu publicize my book. So I don't share everything. Uh, as you said, you know, why give the book away? Why create the book and then give the recipes away? Mm -hmm. So I share as, um, strategically, I should say, uh, with, uh, with groups uh, that uh, I am part of. Uh, sometimes uh, I, uh, I may be in a particular um, fundraiser and they may ask me to donate a dinner, for example. And, and this is a, a tool to fundraise, you know, thousands of dollars. And I may raise, uh, I may share the, the, res the recipes uh, then uh, with that specific group of people. Um, I have shared um, a few recipes online. I have not shared the whole book because I want people to buy my book. I have spent 
four, day, four uh, long years creating this book. This book has 175 recipes plus variations. If you count the variations within the recipes, there are some 223 uh, recipes altogether. It's a heavy book. It's almost five pounds. And um, it's, it's a very precious book to me. But I also realize I've spent a lot of time and a lot of resources uh, creating this book. So, you know, mm -hmm. I want people to buy the book and it has done really well. And, and how can they get I, the, the book? How can they buy it? They can go to my website, AmaliaLLC.com, um, and uh, they can also uh, purchase it uh, on Amazon. Uh, that's another way. And um, I believe that uh, through Amazon, uh, it is available online uh, worldwide. I've seen it that it's available in London. Uh, it's available yeah. in Asia and, and so on. So that, that would be um, a way for people to get it. Um, just a quick, I just want to go back to your book, Eli, because I do have it. I love it. Um, but Thank something you. that's, <laughs> so my friends and I made things from this and it's spectacular, but your cookbook is not just like any other cookbook. Can you kind of go into what else it has other than re recipes? Because I don't want to spoil it for everyone, but I think they should hear from you because it's not just recipes. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, bringing that up because uh, mm -hmm. indeed it is. Um, I tell people that my book is a, um, it's a, it's a memoir um, from uh, my time growing up in, in Guatemala. It's also a recipe collection of, of my favorites, but also it is a way for me to share with others about the Guatemalan culture through the food. And also I share history because culture and history go together. So the book is a, a teaching uh, tool for me because not only I can tell people all these things, uh, but then there are techniques that are inherent uh, to the cuisine. So uh, there are a lot of personal anecdotes uh, connected to many of the recipes. Uh, many of those that I remember cooking with my grandmother. Um, and, you know, this is my, my spin on, on that recipe, uh, for example. Um, and um, so th there is more. There's a very extensive pantry uh, by design because I want people to have access to the ingredients, but also I want to explain uh, the ingredients, what they are, because they're all not created equal. Not all chili peppers are the same. Uh, they're fresh, they're dry, and so on. Uh, but they're also unique seasonings that are part of Guatemalan cuisine. So my pantry is very large by design for that reason. So it has dry and it has fresh ingredients. And in that way, uh, just one question, Amale, because, well, it's like, you know, that while well, you were saying that your book is available in, uh, in Asia and also here in the UK and in the US, and some of the ingredients, I think, so they have to change or you have something to replace them because, well, it's not possible to find them. Uh, did you recommend people that, well, they made these kind of changes or uh, what is suitable in order that maybe just exchange one, uh, I don't know, one ingredient for another one? Yes. So when I moved to the U.S. Um, and I started cooking Guatemalan cuisine here, I ran into that situation that I could not find all the ingredients. Um, and, um, you know, even after all these years, that is still the case. So when I was creating the recipes for this book and testing recipes, I was also uh, testing ingredients. And, and that is another um, aspect that I share in my pantry. I say this chili pepper in uh, Guatemala is called wake, for example, and in the US it's called wajillo. So it is a good substitute. Why? Because I have tested it and, and I have made the substitution with the dish that uses that pepper. So like peppers, like other ingredients that are still not available here in the US, there are suitable 
uh, substitutions, it will never be 100%, uh, you know, if you are not using a certain ingredient, but you, got, you can get very, very close to, to the authentic. And, you know, when we move around the world and, and we miss our country so much, and we want to recreate the cuisine, we, we want to uh, find a way of, of doing it. And, and I've been doing this for, for so long that I, I continue to do that. And uh, there are so many resources, uh, fortunately, here in the U.S. and so many different kinds of grocery stores, that, including ethnic stores, uh, that, you know, at times I go into Asian stores because many of those ingredients uh, will cross with Latin ingredients. Uh, so, um, so by testing recipes and tasting, um, I am able to, to make substitutions and make recommendations that if you can't find this ingredient, then this is a suitable uh, substitute. Well, that sounds a really good idea because, well, believe me, that sometimes, well, uh, for me as a Mexican, sometimes I'm struggling here in the UK to find. And also when I'm going to this Asian food, sometimes the chili or the, the peppers, they are not as spicy as what, as what are we expecting. Sometimes they are a little bit sweeter and it's like a, not the best taste. Sometimes it's like when you try it and you say, what is happening here? It's not, I, I, I did something wrong. But yes, of course, like sometimes you have to find like the, the correct ingredients in order to make a match. And it's like, yes, as you were saying, it's more like tasting and just to try it. And, yeah, and I, I would like to add one, one, one more thing in terms of ingredients. Um, there are many ingredients that um, are now packaged in cellophane bags. Uh, many ingredients that are uh, packaged in uh, small jars, but one trend that I have seen that is growing um, very rapidly is the frozen food section. So oftentimes, you know, peppers, chili peppers, and even fruits that come from various parts of Latin America, um, you might be able to find them in the frozen uh, food section, in the ethnic section, section, if your grocery store has those. Okay, well, that's a good, a good advice. And uh, just, uh, I, I don't know if you have another question, Roger or Whitney, but I, I, I Roger, yeah, I've yes, please. Question. Yeah, I've got a question. Obviously, from all that uh, amazing you've done in your career, I've seen now you've been presented in one of the main TV chains in America. How you've been uh, as a Latin American, how the English speaking people or Americans have been reacting with these? with this kind of like uh, you try to educate them. How did they receive that? Yes, um, I am in a very fortunate position because I, I am in Minnesota and, and Minnesota does not have a lot of Latin Americans yet as other parts of, uh, of the US. And, and people appreciate uh, Guatemalan cuisine, they appreciate ethnic cuisines. Uh, they are uh, always interested in learning uh, what's up and trendy, what's new, what's delicious, what's unique. So I have uh, been invited to be a regular guest um, on a local uh, show where I present um, uh, Guatemalan cuisine as well as uh, other Latin cuisine. Uh, when I travel, I come back and I share what I have um, what I have cooked with other people. Um, and so people are, are keen and open to learning about, um, not only about Latin, Amer Latin America, they're open uh, to learning about uh, other cuisines. And I have seen that that, has, that interest has increased uh, in the last uh, ten, uh, 10 years about, and it's been growing, um, it has been growing steadily, uh, and I'll say that in the five, last five years, uh, even more so. There are more uh, ethnicities uh, in this city than there were uh, 10 years ago, and, and that, is, that is a good thing because uh, diversity is a good thing. Excellent. Thank you very much, Amalia. And just, I have just uh, a last question. It's like, if we're going to invite people to go to Guatemala, what are the dishes that they must try? The ones that you can say, well, if you go to Guatemala and you don't try these, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense that you went to Guatemala. So just go and try these. 
Yes, so besides the Mayan stews that I have already mentioned, I'll say that uh, Guatemalans eat two types of tamales, one every Saturday and the other one every Thursday. Uh, the Saturday tamales are to die for, they're wonderful. Uh, they're, they're called tamales colorados and they are uh, made with uh, corn masa and sometimes uh, they have pork or they can have chicken or a combination of those, but the recado is really the key. The recado is the sauce that goes on top of it. Uh, they are uh, wrapped and steamed in banana tamales. The other kind of tamal is called pache. Uh, in pache, the dough is potato-based and the recado is very, uh, is uniquely different as well. Uh, pache sometimes can be uh, a little spicy because um, uh, they have this uh, long, uh, spicy chili pepper, chile ulute, and they're also uh, wrapped in uh, mashan uh, leaves or banana leaves. Mashan leaves are native leaves from Guatemala, and they are also uh, tied with sibake, and sibake is this uh, fiber that is a natural fiber that you have to soak to tenderize it, so to make it flexible so that you're able to wrap the tamales so that they don't fall apart when they're put in the pot and then they are steamed. But those two kinds of tamales, I would highly recommend. And um, we are the culture of limoncito. We put limon, uh, the green limon, in everything from ceviche to cerveza, it's especially for in tamales. And we eat the tamales with pan frances. Pan frances is very uniquely to Guatemala. I have not seen pan frances the way it is in Guatemala in any other part of Latin America. Is it the same recipe? Probably it is, but the presentation is totally different and it is delicious with tamales. So you would think eating flour with, with another uh, corn flour, it, it really works. Okay, well, sounds interesting. So well, it's like, I, I, I will remember just to try the pan, pan frances there in Guatemala that I think is going to be, it is, yeah, well, it's going to be different. And also, well, what you were saying, uh, to put lime or limoncito, yeah, it's like mm -hmm. something that I think, so yes, as Mexicans, we used to put lime to everything. It's like, I know. So, oh yeah, also, <laughs> if something doesn't have flavor, just put some lime and that's it, sort it out. Yeah. It's an easy way to add zest, it's an easy way to add flavor, and it, it has very little calories. So that's my, that's my excuse. And, and vitamin C, yeah, that we need vitamin yeah. C. So it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much, Amalia. Um, apologies for the issues, technology issues, but well, we're <laughs> going to have this. Uh, we're going to broadcast this one as soon as we complete this. Uh, this well, that we're recording the the interview. So we're going to have it on Facebook as soon as possible. But now let me pass well over you. Ah, yes, Roger. Yeah. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Yes. I'll Thank you so for much. A bit. You're on mute, Roger. The last thing, Amalia, where we can find you again? Tell us your the website, book? please. Oh, the website. All your social networks, yeah. AmaliaLLC.com is my website, and people can find me on Facebook or uh, Instagram under Amalia Moreno Damgard. Amazing. Thank you very much, Amalia. It's been a pleasure to having you in the show. Thank you very much. Likewise, you don't have to go. thank you. You don't, you don't have to go, you're gonna stay here. Yes, please yeah, yeah, stay I here. Know you're gonna stay here because so, you need to watch the, the last segment, which is the best. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> oh, God, which is it's a pleasure. <laughs> That's it. Way to put okay. the pressure on me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marty, Roger, I think so you are going to introduce, you are going to introduce our next guest. I think so. Over you, Roger. Yes. We have it here. Well, our next guest, Monica Sarmiento. She's a Guatemalan artist, an actress, a producer, a singer, a violinist. Since she's five years old, she's an artist. At seven, she went to the National Conservatory of Music in Guatemala. Her father taught her to play piano. She's been in many countries singing and playing all kinds of plays. 30 solid years of career and 25 plays. She's one of the greatest artists from 
Guatemala country, please give it a welcome to Monica Sarmiento. Hello, Monica. You are a mute, Monica. There Here you. we go. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, Monica. Welcome to Latin American Show. It's been a pleasure and an honor having an artist of your uh, amazing 30 years of career. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to you for the invitation. I, I'm very, very glad to, to be here because it's the first time that I'm, uh, well, you know, talking in front of so many people besides my country, you know, foreign, foreign countries. <laughs> well, I want to start the interview uh, with you become a very accomplished violinist, having traveled many countries, working in many famous musicians. What's the experience like? Well, you know, I uh, I started very very early. Um, my father was the um, was the conductor of the National Symphony Orchestra, and uh, well. Uh, I think my main influence uh, in my life was him uh, because uh, he, he started to play the, the marimba since through the since age of three. He was a, he was a very genius, a, a virtuous child. And uh, he played the marimba and then he became to, um, to be a composer, a conductor. He was the conductor, as I told you, of the National Symphony Orchestra here in Guatemala. Then he had studies in Argentina, in Paris, and then he started to conduct around well, almost all the world. You know, he, he conducted a lot of orchestras in all America, in Europe, in Japan. And uh, he made a lot of compositions, symphony compositions, academic compositions. And uh, for me, it was really fascinating to, to see him on stage when I was a, a, little, a little girl. And to see him standing up to uh, people, standing up, uh, applauding him. Uh, whatever he performed, hitting what from performer in Guatemala and and in other countries, um, he supported me a lot. But he told me once that uh, to be a professional musician, uh, discipline was the most important thing. And um, well, he was like like a little worried for for me <laughs> because you know I, uh, I I think that almost every everybody when when we became teenagers, uh, I, I wasn't the, 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 the exception. I was very lazy, very no. lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, not very, very, but I was a little more <laughs> and, and, being, and being his daughter, could you imagine that? <laughs> but if, uh, if you told me, in those years, in those years. In those years. You, yeah. You being as a Latin American traveling around the world, how the people embrace you? How you feel that the people was with you as a Latin American? Well, you know, it, it, it's been it's been really really something very 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 special. I I studied in Costa Rica. I, I took some some courses. I lived in Bogota. I was a um, I was playing with the Philharmonic Orchestra of Bogota. And there I, I had the opportunity to, to play and, and study and to practice with uh, a great teacher, Frank Preuss. He is, because he's still alive, he is a, a German violinist and he, he went to, to radicate to, to Colombia since he was a little boy. So that was an, an incredible opportunity for me because I wasn't graduated. In, in that year, I'm talking about year 1987, more or less. And uh, well, then I, I went to Puerto Rico, like uh, four years in a row. I got the opportunity to be with Mstislav Rostopovich, the great uh, violoncellist, and take some courses too and master classes with Elizabeth Atkins. She was the assistant concert master of the National Symphony of Washington. So I, I had a lot of experiences, you know, with, with my studies. Then, uh, well, I, I was studying here until 1990. I graduated from the uh, National Music uh, Conservatory here in Guatemala. It's called the um, uh, Germán Alcántara. That's the name of the, of the conservatory here. And in that same year, in 1990, I started, uh, well, I won, I won my, my place at the National Symphony Orchestra. So I have been playing with the orchestra 
you know, legally since 1990, but, it's, but I started before. I started like five years before. And then uh, with the theater, this, this, it was a very incidental moment because uh, I, we have a friend that I think maybe later we are going to talk about him. It's Jorge Ramirez. He, he, uh, he's a um, uh, escritor, writer. Writer. He's, mm -hmm. uh, he's a theater <laughs> writer, a uh, great comedian here in Guatemala. He's very, very famous too. And he said, okay, hey, do you want to play in a, to act in a play that we are, we are writing with a friend? And I said, okay, well, I like theater, but then I never studied theater. I, um, I acted in, at school, you know, and was playing like, like an actress in, at home, but my, my world was music. So I said, okay, let's, let's do it. And this, uh, this play became uh, a really, it was like, like a phenomenon, you know, here in Guatemala. It, it's called La Epopeya de las Indias Españolas. Let's call it like, uh, an epic poem of the Spanish Indian, something like that in English. Okay, so uh, I started, and there is an a, a before and an after the epopeia because it changed a lot of the the history in the in the in the theater here in Guatemala. So we became very famous with with this play, and we have been acting in this play since thirty years ago. Yeah, so. The public has been very grateful with all the all of the all of the, the jobs, all the plays, all the concertos I I make with the with the orchestra or with my group, you know, when I'm acting, and it's, it's very it's very beautiful because I, I love people, I love to be in touch with people, I love my profession, I love to sing, I love to play the violin, I love to play the guitar, I love to conduct the orchestra because uh, sometimes the uh, well, it's just a, a tradition that I am now the conductor of the of the Christmas season every year, and uh, people, I think people uh, is very thankful about it, you know, because they they like it very much. There are very very good concertos, very 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 good uh, good shows. So for me, it, uh, <laughs> that that that's uh, from from last year. Um, so people is is very beautiful. And uh, that makes me feel very good because because it's a sign that that I'm I'm doing right all all, all the things you know I think I'm I'm being receiving with with love and I, I don't know it's, it's the best for an artist that that the audience uh, can say you you're so good I admire you and you know blah 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 but I love people. Well, that's an amazing that's an amazing career. That's an amazing short way to say it so many years <laughs> but all that experience in music all that experience in theater goes to the next question <laughs> yeah i have one um so well first of all if that's the word for lazy then i think we're all really really lazy because <laughs> we're so <laughs> yeah. accomplished i'm sitting here thinking oh gosh but my question actually is it has to do with one of your parts in a recent series cuarentazo um could you please like talk a little bit about the show in your role and like just what is the show about and um, where can you find it? Um, things like that. Cause I know we're supposed to mention it. <laughs> well, you know, this is, this, uh, this is a, a very new way to not, not exactly to, to do theater because it's not theater, it's not TV. I, I don't know how to call it, but it's, it's a new format, you know? Um, we started, at Jorge and Mendel Samayor is the, our director, uh, artistic director. Uh, they think, they thought about something to do with the lockdown, you know, because we can get in touch between, with the people, no? So, uh, Jorge started to write this, 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 this story. It's called Cuarentenazo, no? Cuarentenazo. Ah, Cuarentenazo. Ah, vale. So, uh, Cuarentena in, in mm -hmm. quarantine, so that, that's the name. And, uh, and they said, okay, people, you're gonna be here, all right? And uh, everybody is going to, to receive a text, you know? So you have to study it. And if you have dialogues, you have to memorize the dialogue of your, your partner, okay? So I'm gonna call every, every one of you 
and we are going to get in touch and we're going to be which is the 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 best light that you have at, at home or if, if uh, the this dean is going to be at night so i'm going to call you at 7 p.m and you have to be in your room for example your bedroom so okay monica so where are you well i'm i'm sitting in my bed okay so uh, light on your 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 room. Okay, move your camera to your to your right. Okay, so we tried to do something like that, and then we had to to film to film us, you know, uh, alone by ourselves with a phone. So oh. the whole series, the whole series is filmed with cell phones. Everybody just with cell phones. So. For example, if you, if you with me and I, you, we had a, a, a scene. Okay, so I have, I have to start, okay. So Whitney says, Monica is clear that you are a very, very solid, okay. And I, and I had to, to think, okay. Monica, and do you know where I'm at? Okay, and then I started to, 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 re to record and I was thinking, how can you say your text and how many long, how many time it takes to you to, to say it. So the memory has to be like you know, nervous. And then you start to talk. Oh, okay, so, you know, we are here and I, I'm teaching now, can I call you later? Yeah, okay. And then you have to put the, the, the finger uh, in, in the screen because the people, when, when you see the format, the people feel that they are looking at you in, uh, by the phone, you understand? So, oh. so they're, they're like this, they see your finger, and then they, 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 the 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 call starts. Yeah. So wow. everybody have everybody had had to to record it in in this format, and then they edit 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 it edit it edit it edit it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have been doing the the episodes because they are like. Five chapters with five mm -hmm. or four episodes in each one, you know, like four or six minutes. But the thing is that you can see the series uh, in YouTube, mm -hmm. in Facebook, in, in, in Instagram, whatever you want, mm -hmm. just with yourself. If you want to watch it on the TV, no, perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's a very, very, uh, uh, how do you say? Um, it's very easy, very practical to yeah, see. Yeah, it's any practical. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. then, practical. What, what I'm trying to say. It's very practical. You only, you only turn up your Facebook. Ah, okay. Now is the, the chapter. Okay, bye. See you next so, time. So this and, project, this project, it was filming completely in your home because obviously the quarantine is going on around. So... <laughs> This is now a new format to communicate to, to the people. Wow, this is a very clever and very and then, amazing thing. It's very, it's very impressive that nobody of us get in touch with each other. Nobody. Everybody recorded at home. Everybody. So, and the whole wow. world, the work has been made and edited and everything. Everybody at home, you know. We never had a rehearsal. We only talked to Mendel, as I told you. Okay, so get started at five and send me your 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 recordings. I'm going to to pick one, and that was the job. So, and it, it's it's uh, it's uh, very successful because here in Guatemala they are following it. That a lot also, of also the interesting part of that one, Monica, is that well, this mm -hmm. is in Spanish. However, mm -hmm. it's gonna be like it's gonna have subtitles in English. Yeah, what what is this gonna happen? I was going to talk to you about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, since uh, September the, the 15th, uh, the series is going to have uh, subtitles in English. Okay? So this way, everybody around the world are, are going to be able to, to follow it and to know what it's, it is about it. And you can, you can watch the episodes since the, the very first in um, Guatemala. I, I don't know it, if you have Guatemala. It's Guatemala and then quarenta, uh, qua, quarentenazo. Se, what, se. Uh, that's quarentenazo. That. So se, there you can find the, the chapter one and chapter two. 
chapter three started on on Sunday, last Sunday. Today is the, the second episode of chapter three. Okay, at, at eight and eight Guatemala hour. Yeah, so. And so it's going to be, that one is going to be every Tuesday. Every Tuesday is going to be a new chapter. It's Tuesdays and Thursdays. But now when we are starting a new chapter, they decided to start the new chapters on Sundays. But normally it's Thursday and, uh, no, uh, Tuesday and Thursdays, okay? But you, you can follow the, the, the page the, of Guatemala again. And there you have the whole, the whole information for the days of the chapter. You know, this is the format. This is so, it's so, so interesting. And as I told you, I never saw around the world or here in Guatemala something like that, especially in this time of the lockdown. You know, I, I think this is, is very sur was very surprised not, not only for us yeah. for all the people and and you mentioned working with Mendel Samoya correct on this project so he was a guest on our show earlier so how was it working with Mendel because we talked about him a few weeks ago yeah Men Mendel is a great great guy he's one of my very best friends and all of us we we know very good each other all, all of the people that, that are working here in, in Cuarentena so Everybody knows each other because everybody, we are actors and actresses, you know? We are from the same world. So uh, the first time I, I uh, worked with uh, Mendel was in a movie called Donde Acaban Los Caminos from a very great writer, Guatemalan writer, Mario Montaforte Toledo. So he, he invited me to, to be in this movie. It was a very little, a, a real little role that I made it, but... Um, that I made there, but uh, we are very, very good friends. So uh, it's, it's, very, it's very easy to, to work with Mendel. Not only because we love each other very much and we have a, a lot of trust and confidence, but it's because I, I think, I think he, he makes very, everything very simple. And I love that. I love to, to be simple with everything I do, you know, with the music, with the theater, with the TV, with the radio, with everything. In where I am involved, I like to be very simple. So he said, "Okay, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Okay, do it." Then, 20 minutes later, he called me. "I love you, babe. Okay, you are ready." And I said, "What? Great. There you go." And I said, "Okay, thank you." <laughs> so, so it, it's very easy to 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 work with him. He's a very very uh, good director. He's a, a great guy. And he's a painter too. I don't know. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. He's an that, artist. Yeah, in general. Yeah. Yeah, we have we have seen that you are very multifaceted in Guatemala. <laughs> that well, people they, they do the artists, they do all the different kind of arts in general. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's very interesting because also it's, it, you know what? It's like uh, we have discovered this part of uh, how the different situations are moving you to be from a violin, well, to play the violin and later on at, uh, to be a, a, an artist and well, an actress and going to, to meet some plays and go to the theater, etc. So it's like, and, and her, here I have one question that is like, well, I have two questions actually. But the first one is like, what kind of style? Uh, do you prefer drama? Do you prefer the comedy? Which one is your favorite or which one is the one that you feel like more confident? Here in Guatemala, everybody knows me in theater as a comedian. So, okay. I, I, I have been in for about 30 plays and only let me see, three of them have been dramas. But the last drama that I, that I uh, acted in, it was, it, was, it was called El Cuarto de Veronica. And uh, this was a very excited experience for me because my, my, uh, my role was uh, about a, a very crazy woman, you know, and uh, she was a murderer. She was a psychopath. So uh, it was a very, very hard work to do with Joan Solo, another, another great uh, theater di uh, director here in Guatemala. And uh, you know, the product was excellent. Uh, people received the play very, very good. People cried with me because at, at, at last, at the end of the play, I had to, to, to cry for my mom. You know? mm -hmm. So it, it was very infuriating and it was a, a little hard because because 
comedy, I got comedy in, 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 in my blood, you know, inside me. But I think that when you are a real actor or actress, you have to do everything and, and you can accomplish everything. So that's what I, I am very proud of because I, I made this, this play and it was a, a great success, success. So I don't know, maybe it's because, because I, as I was telling you, I, I love to do everything simple, hard, of course, it, it needs a, a lot of work. I like to work, not uh, as I was a teenager. Now I like to work. I like to work and I work a lot. And Obviously, way, yes. <laughs> Monica, in that way, it's like, how is being the daughter of a conductor and learning at the same time violin? How strict he was with you or... I, th I think it was not easy because also he was a virtuous. He was, he had like these kind of um, skills, like natural skills. Absolutely. You, you did, you did a, a very fine, a very fine string. You know, my father really was very strict. Uh, uh, he, he had a lot of discipline and he was uh, with, with a very strong character, you know, and but I was, I was the favorite, you know, the only woman, I was the, the youngest. So my father, he, he died for me all, all his life. So I, I gave him a lot, of, a lot of headaches, of course, and we had a, a lot of struggles sometimes, but um, I, he, was, he was very, very lovely, you know, he was very lovely, but he, he, he was, um, yeah, very strict with me. He, he always was telling me, Monica, if you are not going to study music, you're not going, not, not going to study music, you don't, don't want to be a violinist. If you want to be a doctor or architect or an engineer, whatever you want, my love, I'm going to support you. But if you are going to be a violinist, you have to practice, you have to study. Because it's, it's very hard here in Guatemala to, 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 have a, to earn money with, with, with art, you know? Really, it's very, very hard. And he, he didn't want me to, to, to have the, this kind of problems being a violinist, of course. But then I said, okay, no, no that, that is his right now. So I, I have the talent for the music. It's easy for me. Okay, let's start. Okay, so I started yeah, with the with, uh, biggest responsibility. And then I graduated and, and then then I went to the university, etc. And, and my all my trips and the courses and everything. But it was it was a little hard, yeah, for for his character and uh, for being uh, this a great figure that he was uh, and a genius. Because uh, as I told you, he was very very famous. But with the theater, then then occurred something that uh, we split out, you know. Uh, but I'm not talking like, like father and, and, and daughter, no. We split up because he, he was always Jorge Sarmientos, the conductor, the, the great Jorge Sarmientos. And I started to be Monica Sarmientos. I wasn't anymore uh, Jorge Sarmientos' daughter. I started to be Monica Sarmientos. So we, we were like this, you know, here. My father with the music and everything, and, and I started with the theater, the TV, the radio, and all, all, all of this. Okay, well, thank you very much, Monica. I think so that it's like, um, of course, I, I, I think so. It's not simple, it's not easy to have a dad that is a conductor and also playing at the same time and trying to study. Mm -hmm. And I think so, it's like in all the different careers that maybe if you are an engineer and your dad is a uh, a, a very well-known engineer or something I think so it's like in all the different careers it's, it's difficult but well it's very good that well at the end it's like a different uh, different routes that you're taking or different uh, ways and, also and different, the it's not the theater, but, but, but as, I, as I told you, you know, he always was very very proud of me he died in uh, 2020 2012 2012 he died and my mother died uh, three years ago so, uh, well, both, both always support me in any way. You know, there were problems, but my, my father loved, loved me uh, as a violinist, as an actress, as everything that I, that I, uh, that I 
did and, and still do. I know they are proud, still proud of me. Well, excellent, Monica. And thank you very much for being here with us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank of you. course, we're going to share uh, the link uh, for uh, for Cuarentenazo, yeah? In mm -hmm. order that people, they can watch it. And also, well, we know that the 15th of September is going to be in English, mm -hmm. while well, it's going to be with the subtitles. So everybody here, like while they are watching us, well, invite your friends. And of course, well, this is a, a new way to make, um, well, to make, I don't know, TV, or as you were saying, it's very difficult to say this, live streams. Well, streams uh, in general, so well, it's like different way to do it. But well, I think it's a good opportunity to know more a little bit about Guatemala. And well, we have, we have learned a little bit about the cuisine, about the gastronomy, and also a little bit of the art that well, it's like uh, with mm -hmm. this multifacetic artist that we have here, uh, Monica Sarmientos. And yes. now, well, I would like to go to <laughs> the final section that we have. Oh, and we are, I'm going to give the word to my friend with me, Nuchereno, <laughs> and the Spanish lessons. Oh Over my you. goodness. Okay, guys. All right. Um, yeah, and like Enrique said, we'll put the link up for Cuarentenazo in, um, in the comments. So you'll have access to that right when this gets published. So, um, okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about, well, performing arts and gastronomy. So let's begin. So as we learned before, we learned the word el arte, um, and that is art, obviously. We like these words, they're cognates. And this is a funny word because if it's just art, it's el arte. So if you want to say like modern art, it'd be el arte moderno. But when it's plural, it, it's feminine. So when you're saying like arts, like las bellas artes or las artes escénicas, so las artes interpretativas, those are performing arts. So it's kind of a weird word where it does that and it's not the only one, but we're, we'll get into more words similar to that in another segment. Um, a couple of words that we talked about, one of the past episodes, they're all starting to blend in right now, so I can't tell you which. We talked about el actor y la actriz. Um, and uh, we have el director, la directora, productor, productora. Así que these are professions in the theater um, that could be used in cinema as well, obviously. And like we talked about, el director is the masculine, directora is a female, like director or whatnot. And we have productor, productora. Y después, ¿qué tenemos? We have el teatro. So we talked about a little bit about theater, acting. So you have el teatro. Um, to say a show or a play, it'd be more a play, una obra de teatro. So anytime you want to say like a work of something, it's una obra de, so una obra de arte, or en este caso, una obra de teatro. And then, of course, another way of saying show is un espectáculo, a show. You can also sometimes use un musical if you're talking about musicals. It really just depends. And um, this is, I want to kind of press pause on vocab for a quick minute and address articles. So there are a couple kinds of articles in Spanish and you've seen me use a mix of them, not just right now, but in past segments. Um, whenever you wanna say a or an, it's un or una, um, but the plural for that in English, we say some of something, it's unos or unas. And yeah, you could, there are other ways to say that like algunas, algunas, but the simplest way is un or una. So un is masculine, something that's masculine, like un actor is an actor, but una actriz, that's feminine because it's an actress. Um, and so when we are using like these articles, it's with number as in singular, plural or gender, masculine or feminine. And the same thing with definite articles. When we want to express the, we would say el, la or masculine, feminine, and then the plural of those, los or las. And again, um, it's not just when we want to say the and we want to communicate that in Spanish, but also when we're making like generalizations about a noun, um, we might not use the in English, but we would use it in Spanish. Uh, a lot of this occurs with things such as verbs to say to like. So if something, if, if there's something you like or you're fascinated by or interested by, in, it'd be like if I were to say I like theater, me gusta el teatro. So sometimes we use these articles even though in English we don't necessarily need to communicate the the in Spanish. And we're gonna talk about this in much more depth, but just so you know the difference between the two, un or una means a or an, unos or unas is some, and then any of the bottom, el los or las can mean the. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> it's a lot of information to give in such little time. 
Okay. Couple more words that are related to more so the theater. Una entrada, that's a ticket. If you look at it, entrar is the verb to enter. So una entrada is like a ticket so that you can enter and see a show. Um, el público is the public or the audience, as we say. El aplauso is a pause. And then el escenario is the stage itself. Okay. So again, una entrada, el público, el aplauso, el escenario. And then we are going to talk food. Okay, so as we learned last episode, la gastronomía is food. We we're talking about Guatemala. So to say Guatemalan as a nationality, it either be guatemalteco or in this case, guatemalteca, porque estamos hablando de la gastronomía guatemalteca. We talked about cocinero, cocinera being a word for cook or chef, but el chef or la chef se puede decir con gente como Amalia. Um, Amalia cocina, eh, el verbo es cocinar, to cook. Cocina la comida sana o la comida saludable. Either one of those, la comida sana o la comida saludable is healthy food, as you can see from her cookbook. And in her cookbook, there are lots of recetas. And in each recipe, you have ingredientes. And there's a lot of stories. So this cookbook is a little bit um, more different, as we discussed, than your typical cookbook. And in said cookbook, and in the interview, actually, it was so funny when we were talking about this topic. I thought, oh, I'm going to present on this. Um, but it's good to repeat. Uh, these are some of the key ingredients in Guatemalan cooking. I didn't have time to put all of them up there, as they were being said. But el limón, limón verde, or as Amalia puts it, limoncito can be lime, sometimes it can be lemon, but in this case, lime. El maíz for corn, which is very typical in Mayan cuisine. El cilantro, this is, um, this wasn't mentioned, but I don't know if it was mentioned, but it's in a lot of recipes, and that's, as you would think, cilantro. You have el tomate, again, another cognate, we like those, tomato. Um, and then los pimientos, peppers, and they could range from not just chilies, but more so um, like bell peppers in her cookbook specifically. And then we have la hierba buena, which is a type of mint or more specifically like spearmint that could be used in the dishes. So those are just some of the most common um, ingredients in Guatemalan cooking. And then we're gonna get to a couple more words there, there's so many words, so we're going to keep repeating these and adding, but just for the basics, a lot of these dishes are, are either composed of meat, la carne, or el pescado, some type of fish, or you could say los mariscos, like seafood. Um, frijoles is um, a staple item in some of the recipes, in quite a few of the recipes in this um, cookbook and in the cuisine in general, just like el arroz, which is rice. And one of the dishes in the book is el arroz con pollo. Remember, double L makes a yes sound, unless you're talking about certain countries like Argentina and Uruguay. Um, and this is um, rice with chicken. And then los rellenitos de plátano. These are, so anything that's relleno, so rellenito, the ito at the end, it's what we call a diminutive. And it like, it's something that's like a smaller version of it. Um, that is uh, when something is like stuffed. So in this case, stuffed plantains. Um, I know plantains are a little bit, they're similar to bananas, but they have more starch in them. It's where bananas are a little bit sweeter. So that's um, a dish in the cookbook. As well as ch chiles rellenos de picadillo, which are stuffed peppers with um, con pollo, with minced chicken. And so those are just a couple of the dishes. And all the dishes in this cookbook um, aside from just like how to prepare them in the history, the names are in Spanish and in English, so you can learn that. Um, something that's also really, really special about this book that we didn't get um, time to talk about is that it doesn't just talk about um, her his, like Amalia's history with these dishes, but also like Guatemalanism, as she calls it, which are some common expressions and some vocabulary greetings, things that you'll hear on the street. So in addition to what I'm teaching you tonight, there is some Spanish in this book. So if you want to learn some Spanish and learn some good cooking, it is all in there. It's really a phenomenal book. So order it now. Um, okay. And then because we are always kind of going over and we our segments are always longer than we plan, this is just a little tasting of um, Heard on the Street. And the first two, I wouldn't even call it slang, but 
Let's just call it that for the sake of it. Um, Las boquitas are like snacks or appetizers, what you would serve before, like right before a bigger meal, like could be lunch, mostly maybe dinner. And I know um, Amalia has a couple recipes with boquitas. And then malunche is like a small banana um, that's seen in Central America. So that's obviously really relevant to not just Guatemala, but the theme for tonight, one of the two themes, cooking. Una burra, this is interesting. This means, okay, so <laughs> un burro is a donkey. So it could be a female donkey, but it also can mean a bus um, in Central America. And I know that we've talked to, and specifically Guatemala, I know we talked about like, for example, when we talked about um, Cuba, La República Dominica, like the DR, Cuba, um, and also Puerto Rico, even though we haven't addressed that country yet, they have um, a word called Wawa, which is like, which that's what they use for bus. And I believe it was in Argentina that they use colectivos. So this is just one of those words that can like have different words um, according to whatever country you're in. So I just thought that was interesting given what I presented earlier. And then last few, aguas. We talked about this in Paraguay when we talked about the Guarani slang for shake. It's like cuidado, ten cuidado, like watch out. I mentioned how, so was, I'm kind of cheating. I already mentioned this. <laughs> it's aguas which is, I mean, agua means water. It doesn't mean that though, obviously. It means watch out, be careful. Um, they say it not just in Guatemala, but Mexico. They even say it in Spain, which is interesting. And then something similar is pilas in Colombia. So you're gonna hear various expressions of these when we go from country to country. So aguas means watch out, be careful. And then el cerote, this was a risk, I'm not gonna lie, because this could have negative connotation completely, but we're gonna focus on just the positive and it's a way that you can call someone like your friend, when tu amigo. So if it's in a nice positive context, it's a good thing. If it's not, then it's not so good. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have chispudo. Una persona, so una chispa is a spark, right? So, which is quick. Um, so it's, it kind of means like someone who's smart, like clever. And sometimes it can mean someone who's like quick to do something, not just quick as in gets it, but quick to get something done. Um, se puede ser como listo. Una persona muy lista. Es una persona chispuda. Um, and that's it. It was a kind of a little bit of a shorter segment, but that's what okay. Are the, what is the other connotation of el, el, el cerote? <laughs> I just want to know because now I it's like lie. now I'm intrigued. Now it's like also yeah, I can see Monica that well. It's like yeah, what is the other one? Because yeah, I I, I don't know that one. We we don't use that word, but I so do go, I have to Google it. it. No, not exactly. Cero, well, I mean maybe in Cuba and other countries, cerote means mojón. You know, a piece of yeah. shit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, here in Guatemala, Thank you can use. If you say to some to, to someone, ¿Qué onda cerote? It, it means, hi, 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 man. Oh. <laughs> Look at the guy. But, uh, but I heard, but, oh, really? But, but so it, it can't, it's it, not. It, almost, uh, um, um, also, something bad, for, for example. Uh, um, you know, he, he was, he was uh, betraying his wife. Yes, erote. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like okay. what a. I, I, but you know, he's a great violinist. He's a great violinist. Que serote. Como toca? How how does he play? Uh, okay, I think so. I know. You, know? you got it. You got it. You got it. Many mm. forms. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, but it, but it's a bad word. Yeah. So yeah, it can be. Um, that's it for the segment. I forgot to put it my side, but makingspanishsimple.com, guys. I'll put it in the post. Go to my website and check out more um, less than PG. Thank you so much, Enrique Slang. <laughs> if you want to learn all the good stuff, I'll post it all there, but we're going to keep the show user-friendly. Teacher, I have one more for you. Oh, no. <laughs> Tengo <You> hambre. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and also, well, after after watching all the different dishes that you were presenting, I think so it's not a good idea, uh, my dear Whitney, because, well, it looks like really tasty and everything, all these chilies uh... and everything. Yeah, like, yeah, that's the reason why. But, yeah. 
Yeah, thank you yeah, very well, much. You're gonna have to get your own coffee. Yeah, no, it's yeah, really it's great, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just took all the inspiration from here. But well, I'll teach more theater, more food vocab. There's so much, but I wanted to concentrate on the specialties and the words that we were using in our interviews in English tonight um, to present in Spanish. So there you go. Thank you okay, very Whitney, much, my dear Whitney. Where, where yeah. do you live so I can I can <laughs> borrow the book? <laughs> I can borrow Order the book. it. I'll send you. Have you, I'll send you, link. you have, you have to, to buy, buy it. You have to buy it. You have to buy it. You Yeah, on. you can go to Amazon. You can Google it. You can put it in Amazon now, and you will find it. It won't, guys. Order it sooner rather than later because if you order it now, it won't come to like October. So the sooner you order it, the sooner you'll get it because it's on back order. It's so successful. So, but get it. It's really good. It's massive. You're getting so, your money's worth. Roger, buy it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay, right. yeah okay. come on. Yes, I'm, I'm and hungry again, now. Sydney and Roger, I want to thank you very, very much. I'm sorry because they're making some people's gear at home. You no know? worries. <laughs> no, no worry, Monica. It has been but a pleasure you. having you here. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. It was a pleasure to be here. I have a very good, good and uh, a great time. So maybe see you next time too. Of course, yes, we will, and also we yes, will watch Quarantenazo. Yeah, and mm -hmm. well, yeah, and of course, let us know any update or something new that you will launch or something that you are going to present, and you can come here and just let us know. We know that, that we can present to the audience, and they can know exactly Thanks. what are you doing, and also well, maybe they are going to enjoy different things and different. Uh, well, it could be like. Uh, movies or it could be like a play or something coming from latin america i think it's going to be very of course, interesting I'll, I'll 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 do it okay so thank you very much i have to i have to teach in 20 minutes so oh, no thank you Excellent. so much for joining oh, us it you. was really thank lovely you. having very, you. Very, very good to you okay you are you're great and i love i love your show i don't know how is the show for real but i'm i want to watch it someday okay so yeah, thank you. of course okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank you <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, thank you very much, my dear Whitney. Also, as always, we learned some new words, and I yes, it's like yeah, I just took some notes. Oh, you learned well. a new word. I knew that word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. 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 Sure. Of course. And uh, well, my dear Roger Alarcón, I think so. We have an invite from some of our friends that they are our friends from Latitude that dwells restaurant. They already open. Yeah, that's our friends of Latitude, the, the, the sponsor here, Latin American show. It's a modern European restaurant located in Wimbledon. They've got, at the end of the month, the last Sunday of the month, they've got, they change the kitchen to a Mexican night. Normally on a, on a normal day, They've got a very fresh and very short uh, menu. So this is the website because it's a modern European kitchen. And also it's got one of the most amazing reviews in TripAdvisor and just won the traveler's choice of TripAdvisor. So book it now. Well, I think it's a good opportunity to everybody, and um, this is in is in West London. So, of course, and also they have like a, uh, also they have like a Mexican a Mexican night, right? That's correct. The last mm -hmm. Sunday of every month. Okay. So, well, you know, uh, well, you know, you you can go to Latitude, and also thank you very much for Latitude for supporting us, and we will let you know soon why they are supporting us, because it's not only Latitude, we have a lot of different uh, supporters, because we're going to have something special prepared for you. But well, I think so. it's time to say thank you very much, and apologies again for all these technical issues, we are going to try to figure it out, we're going to work all this week trying to figure out how can we sort out all these issues in order that we can have a live show next week, and also while well, enjoying the Latin America show. So well, Roger Alarcón. <laughs> okay. Four of four. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much to everyone. I hope so. Facebook once again uh, leave us alone, but hopefully everything is going to be normal next week. See you next week. 
Thank you very much, my dear Roger Whitney. <laughs> Sorry, that's just too funny. I love it. Uh, yes, hopefully we will see you live next week. Um, I won't spoil this episode. I've done that the last two episodes saying what we're going to see next. So I'll let Enrique do no, it. No, no, but... come on, come on. <laughs> Come on, Good. Please. Yeah, I was I was going to actually anyways, but <laughs> we're going to um, see Brazil and not just um, some tourism from someone who is very, very well versed in tourism, but we're going to see street art. So we're very, very, and maybe like a little Portuguese for me, like a little bit more Spanish and I apologize, but I'm really looking forward to that because it's one of my favorite things, street art. So I'm sure you will all enjoy it as well. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado, my dear Whitney. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, of course, well, you know, this show used to be from eight to nine every Tuesday. This is the Latin America show. Thank you very much. You know, next week is going to be uh, Brazil, as Whitney said. So please um, keep, well, check our post and you will see more. Uh, because, well, we have uh, good news for all of you. So, well, thank you very much. My name is Enrique Gelista. This is the Latin America show. Have a good night and have a good week. Bye-bye. <laughs>